What's going on guys? So today, um, one, we are almost at 600 subscribers. You know what that means. It means we're going to do a celebratory appreciation video, which means I will be opening sealed product, which is something that I don't like to do and don't do often. Um, don't misconstrue that. I love pulling awesome cards, but that's just not my luck most of the time. So I've become more of a sealed uh, collector and vintage collector. Um, well, sealed in terms of modern, and then some vintage will be sealed. Um, because a lot of the vintage stuff is already opened up. It's hard to find sealed product. But anyways, guys, moving forward, today's topic is Sword and Shield being one of the best sets that's released in the last couple years. Um, and Sword and Shield is honestly, well, one of the best generations. Um, Sword and Shield is honestly phenomenal, and I'm extremely bullish. Despite how I feel on certain sets um, and what they bring to the table, I do feel like Sword and Shield is a fantastic set. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. I'm going to try and keep it brief, but you know that's kind of impossible for me because of my ranting style. Um, someone did leave in the comments, why don't you go over each set in Sword and Shield? And I think that this is a great overview of all the sets. I'm not even going to wait for Crown Zenith to release because I don't consider it a, ma a main expansion. I consider it an additional expansion. It'll be great. We know that it's going to be hype. We know there's going to be a ton of great cards in it. I will probably do some openings regarding that set. Um, but right now, I'm just going to do an overview of all the sets. Um, my laptop doesn't have, or my tablet flip laptop thing, whatever you want to call it, doesn't have a lot of, um, a lot of battery left. So I'm going to try and go over these sets. Um, follow your star. Okay. So here we are. We're on eBay. So let's start with... I'm not going to ignore these. I'm not going to ignore these. Um, even though I don't really consider them part of the set. Even though they're definitely part of the set. Uh, Sword and Shield Base and Rebel Clash are part of the Sword and Shield era, so I'm going to look into that. Um, I am not going to go over extra expansions. I might go over celebrations, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go into the main sets. Um, I think all these sets are going to be two, three hundred dollars in a couple of years. I think it's a no-brainer. No matter what Pokemon seems to do, even if you know. In another video, I'm also going to make content that's talking about Pokemon. Is it burning you out? Um, is it just too much product coming out? But right now. I'm going to be bullish on Pokemon. I'm going to talk about why in this video. So let's see. Sword. And let's see. Sword. No, not, not, I'm not looking to buy a sword. Sword and shield. Uh, base set booster box. So let's look at those first. If you guys want to go down the actual line of main expansions, sword and shield would be the first one. Um, I really didn't care about the base set. I didn't think that there was that much that was fantastic about it. There are cards that are perfect for the actual TCG and have uh, TCG and have functional uses as far as tournament play and competitive play. But I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm just going to talk about the sets. I bought a Sword and Shield base booster box for two hundred dollars. I probably overpaid, um, but that's what I paid. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. $220, that seems to be, there's one left. Uh, there are some listed at 300 um, to, uh, let's see. I really don't see a lot of base set sword and shield. To be honest with you guys, there's really not a lot here. Um, I am going to look at the most accurate one. I think 370 is way too high. Uh, could be 370. In a couple of months, I don't know, but I think 370 right now is too high. Um, this is, I'm going to zoom in on this uh, just so that I can show you guys. Uh, Sword and Shield base set booster box, 220 right now. So I think 200 was not, a, like I didn't get a crazy good deal on it, but I, I also didn't overpay. So let's move forward to Rebel Clash. Sword and Shield, Rebel Clash. I don't have Rebel Clash. This is actually what I don't have. Um, I wonder, okay, and this was a main set. This was a main set, so crap. I actually have to get Rebel Clash. Um, I hate myself right now because I thought I had all the Sword and Shield sets so far. Uh, I see one um, set at a starting bid of 180. No one's touching it. Um, $15 shipping. I see one going for bidding right now with three days left. 
for 132 and then I'm just going to find a good picture of one to pull up for you guys. $205 looks like uh, what it's going for for the Rebel Clash. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I don't have a big opinion on Rebel Clash. Um, I didn't hear any hype about it, so I feel like it wasn't really all that great of a set. Uh, if there wasn't, if I didn't hear anything about it, uh, being in the hobby the last couple of years, I think in, in at least a year and a half in modern, I think I would have heard something about Rebel Clash. Um, I'll have to look into that and do some due diligence of my own. But moving forward, let's go into Fusion Strike. Uh, Fusion Strike Booster Box. Let's see what these are going for. Um, $100, $110. Let's see. And for these main expansions, I will be looking at the case price, booster case. Um, so it looks like $100 is what you could still get Fusion Strike for. Um, and a case for $675. Those are honestly trending a little bit, a little bit higher than I would have expected. I would have expected it would have been in the 500s area. Um, let's see, and what's my battery at is another question. 19%, yeah, that'll do it. Um, so that's Fusion Strike, uh, Chilling Rain, Chilling Rain Booster Box. Okay, 110 again, and we've got, you guys can probably see right there, 110 for the Booster Box, 650 for the case, which is really good. That's still $100 a box. You could get Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike for like $80. Let's look at Battle Styles. Um, let's see, Battle Styles. Guys, there is a time where you could get any of these for $80. Bucks. Uh, battle Styles, Chilling Rain, and Fusion Strike. You could get for $80. So the fact that they've already gone up to um, $110, even if you can get them to pay for the shipping, and maybe you can even push 120 and get someone to pay a little bit more, um, uh, being a reputable, trustworthy seller. Uh, let's see, that's, uh, 10% of 80 would be $8, 20% would be 16, 30% would be $24. So you, in my opinion, you could easily, if you were buying these sets, um, maybe a couple months after they came out and you were getting those, those bottom dollar prices of like 80 bucks a box, by the case, uh, I think right now you'd easily be sitting at 30% or more, um, even on sets that haven't been that hype. So this is why I'm extremely bullish on Sword and Shield. And these aren't even the big sets. So that's Battle Styles. Um, let's move forward. Um, I want to say, what's up now? Vivid Voltage. Let's check on Vivid Voltage. Um, I think around the board, a lot of these sets are... Okay, so Vivid Voltage... Um, 129, 129, 130. That looks to be the consensus. There's a bidding of 70 on one. 125 is what I see for buy it now prices on, um, on vivid voltage. Um, so that's pretty cool guys, oh, man. Uh, let's see case. Let's look at the case prices. Um, wow. $800, 750. David Adams, eight fifty. Gosh, dang, guys, eight hundred dollars for Vivid Voltage, for a case. This is insane. This is insane. So let's keep going. Now we're talking more than thirty percent. We're talking more like forty percent gains on these boxes. Maybe a couple months after they come out. Um, Darkness Ablaze. I think people really are going to end up liking that one down the road, just because uh, it's got the Charizard and. Some people didn't have great luck. I pulled the Charizard in like literally my third pack of Darkness Ablaze. So I was really happy. 150? That's the lowest. 133 shipping a 7. So 140, 140, 140, 140. And the first one that pops up is 150 for Darkness Ablaze. Guys, this is, this is getting out of hand. Uh, these are going up so fast. Let's look at the case. I'm glad eBay knows what I'm trying to do. 750. We've got a nice photo right here showing you all these cases stacked. That's kind of like the ideal sealed collector um, strategy that you should have an area. For me, it's my closet. That's where I keep my valuable sealed cases. I want to keep all those cases in there and just stack them up, even though I do worry about stacking cases on cases. Can you damage booster boxes? Is the rigidity of the cardboard in the cases enough to not damage, you know, the tops 
of those packs because the booster boxes of today are very flimsy, very flimsy. Um, I don't think they're as rigid as they used to be uh, or the or the paper is as thick as it used to be. But uh, okay, moving forward. Um, okay, let's get into Evolving Skies. I already know what to expect with Evolving Skies. 300 a booster box. Um, yeah, 300 a booster box. Uh, you guys should be able to make that out pretty easily. 300 a booster box. Let's look at the case. Um, I remember thinking 150 was too much on that. Um, and now they're 300 bucks. Uh, 1400 is the cheapest one that I see. 1800. 1800 is the going cost for a case of Evolving Skies. Um, I bought a case from Simply Unlucky a couple months ago for $1,000. And I thought that was insane. Um, now I'm like, yo, a thousand dollars was a great investment in this. I really wish, and I still think that Evolving Skies is the best set by the crap out of Evolving Skies. That is, that is the epitome of Sword and Shield. I don't think it's going to be Crown Zenith. I don't think it's going to be Silver Tempest or Brilliant Stars. It's Evolving Skies. We all know that. The numbers speak for themselves by Evolving Skies. Someone in the comments on another video I did said that there was going to be a reprint in the UK and that that would come to the US. Doesn't matter. People want Evolving Skies so badly that this market is willing to absorb whatever supply comes in immediately. And you can bet your butt that if Evolving Skies dropped in the US, I would go to whatever store I could buying that product so fast. Um, especially when you're getting it at retail when right now packs are basically like $12, $10. Uh, this is insane. Um, okay, moving forward, uh, we want to check out Brilliant Stars. Not sure if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think I am. Brilliant stars. Right now, a uh, a booster box, a booster box of brilliant stars is well. It pulled up cases first, so let me just show you the price of a case right now. Um, Eleven hundred, almost twelve hundred dollars. So brilliant stars, I think, is in close in second place uh, for the uh, cake. I think Silver Tempest will surpass that pretty quickly because it has the Lugia. Um, booster box. Let's just see if we can find some individual booster box prices. All right. 175 is the lowest one for brilliant stars. I think that is massively overpriced. God, these sets go up so quickly. It doesn't even matter. Like they can burn us out over print, have the printers going brrr, and no matter what we still buy these sets. And you're like, damn, I'm burnt out. But then in a couple months, you're like, wow, I feel good about this investment. So Pokemon overall has made me very happy. Um, I think I think Yu-Gi-Oh! could follow suit. And I'm going to talk about that in another video because they have a very exciting... Konami released some very exciting news. They're going to be doing reprints of all the OG sets. Um, I don't know if this is going to be part of their celebratory uh, anniversary set coming out. But super hype. I have all the old binder sets almost complete. For the old, the first like 10 Yu-Gi-Oh sets, I have like all the booster boxes up on my top shelf of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. So I'm really excited. I want to do a separate video on Yu-Gi-Oh. But considering most of my position investing in collectibles wise is pretty much in Pokemon, I felt like this was a an important video to wrap up this era. Um, and because somebody asked to do a video comparing these sets, talking about them. Um, Everything looks very similar across the board. I think there's money to be made across the board on any of these sets. Um, again, I said Brilliant Stars, Silver Tempest, and Evolving Skies. Those are the, the top ones, I think. Um, people can have their own opinion. That's my that's my opinion. Um, okay, so 175 is the booster box price. All right, let's check out Astral Radiance. I was not a fan of Astral. My wife got me a booster box. Now I have two booster boxes of Astral. But um, I really wasn't a fan of it. I, I, I didn't really care for it when it came out. Um, and it's still struggling. Um, $100 a booster box is what it's at. I think it's a good price point to buy it. The Machamp is really starting to go up in value. There's a Machamp uh, alt art that looks really good. He's running through a, a grocery market, fresh market, whatever. He's holding a bunch of items. So that Machamp is a cool artwork. Uh, a good reason to invest in Astral Radiance. Um, if you're not a huge fan of the cards in general, uh, I see cases right now, cases 615 astral radiance could be a good play. Um, considering the other sets have already started going up. I think astral is, is a good play. Um, 
let's look at Lost Origins. Now, I got a case from somebody that works uh, alongside a friend that works in Troll and Toad or owns Troll and Toad. I don't know if I fully believe that. Um, but he seemed legit. He plays in tournaments. And uh, he sold me a case of Lost Origin um, for $540. I believe that was $90 a box. Um, right now, it looks like these boxes are 106 107 It looks like the shipping is free. So I'm already making a little money on that. Um, let's see. Case, 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 case. Um, and I don't have each type of product within every set. Some sets I have a I have an ETB, some sets I don't. But I try to have at least the booster box, which is the staple investment for each set. And what I'm learning now is when these sets drop, don't buy into the hype immediately, but buy cases. Buy cases of booster boxes or sleeves, whichever is your preference. I haven't quite figured out mine yet. Um, I still think sleeves could be a good play, but I can't afford to buy both cases and cases of sleeves. So I'm sticking with the thing that I trust a little bit more that's kind of always been a staple in, in all these card hobbies, which is booster boxes. Um, all right. Wow. Fantastic. $750 on a case. So on my price, I've already, it's already gone up 60 bucks. 160 and that's what 750 so 210 i've already made 210 dollars on that case if i were to sell that today you are gonna have shipping costs you are gonna have fees so you're gonna have to raise your prices a little bit higher but i'm pretty sure someone like myself as this channel grows as i grow as a collector and my knowledge and people trust me um, i think that you can sell things for a little bit of a premium even though that's not what you want to do when you get big enough where you can support people like TCA Gaming, Simply Unlucky, uh, Danny Phantom, uh, sellers like that. When you get big enough, you want to give back to the hobby. And I think that, you know, first off, their channels are monetized so much to a point where they can afford to really give back and spread the hobby. And it helps them. You want more people in your hobby. You want them to check into your channel. You want them to be interested in the investment part of it. And, and for me, it's more of the investment part of it. Um, okay. We had Lost Origin. Now, my favorite, almost one of my favorites, other than Evolving Skies, at least this year, Silver Tempest. Uh, let's go Silver Tempest. Silver Tempest Booster Box Case. All right. So I recently got a case of Silver Tempest for $580. Wow. Now, this isn't totally accurate, but Dave and Adams uh, is selling a case for $815. Um See another case for 700. Yo, this that that is insane. That is insane. 700 no way. No way. And I I can't find any other options to be honest with you. 640 640 looks like is it's as good as it gets. Um here's one that shows 650 right there. Um Let's see what the individual boxes are going after. I loaded up on this set because I just I had a really good feeling about it. Uh, why did it just do that? I didn't want Evolving Skies. Uh, silver, Silver, Tempest Booster Box. Okay. Yeah, so I still think that this is a good price for how hyped this set is. 125 is what Silver Tempest is going for. That's pretty much still on par with what I paid for most of my boxes. Um, and that's, that's for the holidays, for getting discounts. I know when Silver Tempest came out, I was paying $140 a box. And after tax, it ends up being like $155. So in my opinion, it's going to go over $155 very soon. Um... It's just a waiting game. It seems like with Pokemon, it's just a waiting game. And I had my speculation when I have started moving from vintage collecting and moved into modern. I barely even look now for vintage stuff. I, I want to, but I'm, I'm one, I'm saving my money for a first edition Charizard to complete my first edition graded base set. That'll be really exciting. So I'm really trying to give up the small things every week so that in a month or two, I can afford to just outright buy a first edition Charizard. Uh, that would be so freaking sick. And like a PSA 5, maybe even a 4 or a 4.5 Beckett. That would be really cool. It doesn't have to be the nicest stuff. I just, I'm a completionist. I need to complete the set. Um, okay. And uh, you know what? Let's look over Celebrations too. I think we should look over Celebrations and see how that's doing. Celebration, celebrations, elite trainer box. 
So Celebrations was like a mini expansion. Um, I remember when I was buying ETBs, they were about $50 a piece. Um, whether it was from Target or online, it was always pretty much $50 a piece. It was never anything more than that. Maybe $55 after tax and shipping. Um, I see them now trending at $85 and $80, guys. And the reason that Celebrations is a really important set is because Celebrations has the Charizard. It has the big three. Honestly, I would go grab you. There's some of my favorite cards. You know what? If you guys are willing to wait a little bit, hold that thought. Let me grab them. Just for some of the new people on the channel, let me just share some of my favorite cards. Um, I did not pull the Blastoise or the Venusaur, but that's okay because when this set came out, Guys, quiet! Our Maltese are yappers. Um, when this set came out, um, fixing my hair. When this set came out, I was able to get the Blastoise and the Venusaur uh, for like $10 a piece. It was like nothing. It was fantastic. I loved it. I couldn't believe it. Um, but I did pull this fantastic mint condition Charizard. It's actually way, way, way deep in my YouTube feed. Uh, me and my wife, Diana, it's I think the first celebrations etb i ever opened maybe the second maybe the first one i opened on camera really want to get that close up there um it's really a fantastic looking card it's got a it's got a hard case on it and it's got a, a, a sleeve so it's harder to, to see the quality of this card but they look really really good and it's an ode and a tribute to the um old artworks for this card Really an absolutely beautiful card. Yeah, that should show really nicely. We got the external lighting hitting at perfect. Um, guys, this is fantastic. And I think there's a lot of investment value in these Celebrations Charizards because right now they're going for like 50, 60 bucks. Um, I also don't know if there was some competitive play with some of the Celebrations cards, but I think there was. Um, but anyways, Celebrations was another great set. Um, and you've got Crown Zenith. Um which is going to be overpriced, and I do think that it's going to be a great investment. But overall, Sword and Shield is just, it's just heading up. That's like, that's basically the basis of this video. Um, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Um, in terms of comparing the different sets, I know someone wanted me to compare each set, but they are very similar in the market pricing as investments. Um, Chilling Rain is really fantastic. People give Chilling Rain a lot of crap. But here's why Chilling Rain is going to go up a lot in value, too. Uh, let me grab, bear with me, guys. This is why Chilling Rain is going to go up right here. This card right here. Um, this Blaziken alternate art. I don't know if the external lighting is really going to show it off the way that it should be. I mean, this card is absolutely fantastic. I mean, when you get the light on it and you're looking at it up close, it, ju it just shines so beautifully. And I wish that I could show that to you guys more accurately. I'd have to take it out of the packaging. Um, I really felt like grading was a little bit of a gimmick. Um, as much as I love having graded cards, that's because of the protection. Uh, if you can buy them graded and, and, and get a good deal, go for it. Um, even right now, grading is only 15 bucks. I'm still not doing it. Um, I still think that you can buy these plastic magnetic cases for super cheap. Uh, you know, buy a bunch of team team bags right here. Um, and just put them in there and it looks so nice. It displays so nice. Um, I don't need a grade to tell me that the card is, is beautiful. Um, although it's really nice to have grades. I, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so I think for Chilling Rain, that was that is a fantastic set. Um, and then, oh man, I just knocked over a ton of cards. That's, that's lovely. Um, this is exactly why I need to reorganize the game room and get rid of all of these cards that I have just um, sitting in front of me, in front of the camera. Ooh, Butterfree. That's a fantastic artwork. I'm actually about to show you guys that. Man, they don't make them like they used to. My damn fanny pack knocked over um, all these freaking cards. Let me readjust here. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, but man, they don't make artwork like that anymore. Like, say what you want about modern... Like, vintage is dead. There's so many people that are like, vintage is boring, vintage is dead. Um, you know, modern is going to surpass vintage. Maybe. Um, I personally don't believe that. I don't believe that will ever happen. I feel that vintage fundament fundamentally 
was printed less and will hold more value. Um, but I do think right now as modern stuff is being printed and if you're in the hobby, you owe it to yourself to try and find this stuff and go get it for bottom dollar price. And then you have it as an investment or you can open it up, but you're getting a good deal on it. Whereas buying a sealed vintage pack like these guys over here, you know, um, and even the artworks on these packs look so fantastic. But buying a vintage pack like this, God, everything about these is just nostalgic. Buying a vintage pack like this is like four or five hundred dollars and it might not even have anything. Um, that's not affordable for any collector. And that's unfortunately the route that I took when I first got back into collecting cards again. Um, I was looking at only vintage stuff, theme decks, um, packs, old cards, people's collections, buying bulk. That's what I was looking at. Um, and that really burned me out a lot faster than the modern did. But then I got into modern and I went crazy trying to open up every pack, trying to find good cards. And I didn't have any luck doing that either. So um, anyways, um, I think that, I think that Sword and Shield is fantastic. I highly recommend um, that you invest in Sword and Shield. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, I'm a collector. I want to see the market go up. But the market's going to go up with or without you regardless. Um, it's just about, or do you want to get in now or do you want to wait for Scarlet and Violet? We have no idea what Scarlet and Violet brings. We don't know if it's going to be a crapshoot or if it's going to be just as great as Sword and Shield. And that's the thing. During Sword and Shield, a lot of people ripped on Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike, Darkness of Blaze. It was just like, it wasn't, it, it's not that great. And then there were avid collectors that were like, this is a good investment. And some of them I kind of didn't agree with, but now I'm like, I'm seeing it. The numbers don't lie. Um, Sword and Shield is doing great. And it gives me hope that Scarlet and Violet is going to be another era that we can be ready to invest in, collect in, and see our money grow and work for us. Um, now, this isn't, a, this isn't a flip it investment. This isn't like a buy it and the next day flip it. You probably can, but it's not really worth the effort and the time that it might take you. Um, I really think it's best to buy these sets, load up on them when they come out, get your bottom dollar down. You'll be like, oh, I spent 500 on a case. I spent 1000 on a case. I spent my check on a case. I bought four cases of Pokemon cards. I spent my check. But the thing is, down the road, those cases could be worth two, $3,000. And then you're sitting there like, wow, I bought four cases for two grand. And now those four cases are worth $3,000 each at $12,000 net. That's insane. Now, that is best case scenario. You know, that's that's Evolving Skies. But think about it. Evolving Skies is almost $2,000 a case. It came out last year. It came out last year. And it's almost $2,000 a case. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. But I'm down with it. And it makes me happy. Um, all right, so that wraps up the video, guys. Um, I do want to talk about the fun stuff that Konami is doing with the reprints coming out for Yu-Gi-Oh! Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders. I know I don't talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. I almost started building a big position in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was just having terrible experience buying cards online. There, like, I feel like it's easier to find a Pokemon card in good condition that you really want versus a Yu-Gi-Oh! card in good condition that you really want. The dark backs of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards make them harder to see if there's damage or creasing. Whereas there's something about the the Pokemon, the the back of the Pokemon, and and where it, where it gets like wear and tear and it gets white edges uh, against that blue. It's very easy to see. Um, and the same with the front with the yellow borders. There's something about it that I love because it makes it very easy to tell if the card is in decent condition. And I haven't had as many horror stories with Pokemon as I did with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I only I only wanted to start building a, a position in Yu-Gi-Oh! like two months ago. And after one week or two weeks, I was like ordering stuff in and I was just like, this stuff's in terrible condition. And, and I paid good money for this stuff. So that's going to happen with anything. You know, maybe I just don't know the Yu-Gi-Oh! market as well. But I know the vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! cards well. And I knew what to look for. I knew what cards were going to be really valuable, the ones that would never get reprinted, like the Game Boy cards um, and uh, Forbidden Memories, FMR cards, like anything from like a special promo old tin or set that was old. That's what I was looking for. But then I started looking in more generic stuff and um, I just, 
I wasn't as happy with what I was getting. So I'm really excited that Konami is coming out with this reprint. And I think Yu-Gi-Oh! could be a really good investment too down the road. Right now, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! collectors, I think, and influencers, uh, channel content makers, I think they're they're like, wow, what is happening? Like the Yu-Gi-Oh! market is, is like seemingly hitting rock bottom. Um, Pokemon is dominating. Go with the path of least resistance. I watch a channel that I that I definitely recommend to you guys, Alpha Investments. It's got Rudy. Um, he's a big magic, TCG, whatever collector. And he comes at it with a very invested in, investor uh, standpoint approach. And, um, um, and he's talking about Pokemon and he's like, you know, I, I can't help it. This seems like the thing that's that's a winner regardless. And I have to agree. I mean, I did this because it fulfilled childhood dreams and it made me happy. I didn't necessarily at first think that this was the best way to use my money. Um, now I'm like, wow, I'm killing it. Like this was a great, this is a great deal. Even some of my sneakers that like my friends used to like make fun of me for buying sneakers. I sold my first sneaker collection to buy my first car. That's a pretty big deal. You know, and even the ones that I have left, a couple ones I have left have, have risen in value a good bit. Um, but nothing like Pokemon. This whole Pokemon phenomenon just is, it's just crazy. So anyways, guys, oh, I'm just now noticing that the video was not quite level the whole way through, but whatever, whatever. Y'all know that I have raw content and I, I that's the style that I do for videos. Uh, I hope you guys liked this um, video. I, you know, let me know what you think of different sets. Um, and why you think they could be good. Um, Fusion Strike has the Mew VMAX. Uh, Brilliant Stars has the Charizard. That's what you want. Um, that's why Brilliant Stars is going crazy, in my opinion. Um, Silver Tempest is going to do the same thing. Because Lugia is, and other people have said this, the Charizard of Gen 2. Um, and yeah, that's basically a wrap, guys. Um, I don't think you can lose investing in Sword and Shield. Unfortunately, that era is coming to an end on January 20th. We'll see Crown Zenith and that'll be the last of that. And then we'll be moving into Scarlet and Violet. Um, I, I can't wait. I'm super excited. Now that the channel is getting some traction, I, I feel like people are listening. So um, I'm excited for that and to talk about that stuff. I will be talking about a darker subject in another video. I've got a lot of videos to do today. I will be talking about, is Pokemon burning us out? Uh, is Pokemon burning you out? I will be talking about what is Konami doing with Yu-Gi-Oh! Super excited for that. Super excited. Um, and uh, also my appreciation video for hitting 600 subscribers, which I know we're going to hit 600 subscribers today. The, every day now the subscribers are increasing and that's just, I'm so grateful guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'm excited to do a video on that and maybe, just maybe, we pull something decent from one of these packs. Anyways, peace out, guys. Make it a great day. Um, I also want to want to leave this video with this message. Um, take care of yourself. Take care of your mind and your body. If I wasn't going to the gym, if I didn't meditate a little bit, if I didn't practice self-care and, and time to myself, there's no way I could do videos back-to-back, -back, run a bar business, go to USPS every day and sell Pokemon cards like it's very easy to get overwhelmed and burnt out and content creators have talked about this. And I think, you know, that's why it's important to stay in the best shape possible mentally and physically. Um, get outside, get some fresh air, get some sunlight today, you know, go to the park, do something, take your dog for a walk. If you have, if you have a dog, um, maybe you can take a cat for a walk too. I don't know. Um, anyways, guys, just take care of yourself. Love yourself. That's the end of this video. Peace out.